Something that gamers have become accustomed to over the years is the tutorial section. This is a reasonably new practice developers have implemented into their games that they're putting out. Old school gamers may claim back then it was just a case of get good, but the real reason for games having tutorials is the lack of instruction manuals packed in with the game. But there are some titles that got put out there that managed to start without the need for a tutorial, but still managed to get players to grips with how they play, as well as setting up the characters and narrative. Essentially being areas within a game that act as a silent set of instructions based off of player agency. Few games manage to pull this off, but I think the example we're going to take a look at in this video does this perfectly. So let's analyse the opening section of Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid has a few options to pick through before you can start the game to help you get a grasp of what's going on. You have the VR missions that help you take baby steps to becoming the master of stealth, or you have the briefing, which is essentially a prologue to the game. As well as these, you have an opening cinematic before the start screen that helps set the story in motion. But for this video, I want you to imagine that none of those existed and that the only option was to start the game from the title screen. So the first thing that we see is a dark tunnel filled with water with a figure swimming through it, with a calm orchestral song in the background, complete with an operatic vocal. The camera goes to a first person perspective, giving you a view of the starting area, obscured and tinted by the color and motion of the water. The angle changes, giving you a peek at the enemies patrolling the area, followed by a panning shot, showing the area in its entirety. Then comes an interesting cutaway, a brief moment of a mysterious guy in a long coat giving orders to one of the guards, all whilst keeping his face somewhat out of view. He talks in coded language, saying how he wants to swat some bothersome flies before taking the elevator up and finally revealing his face. This gives you the first glimpse of what your task is without specifically telling you. Follow the mysterious man. Before the gameplay starts, you will receive a call on your communicator called the codec. This screen gives you a sort of future retro look, with your character and the person you're speaking to's faces both being shown, like an old fashioned FaceTime. Here is where you learn your character's name, Snake, followed by a brief overview of what to do next and how to use your codec. Now let's get to the fun part, the gameplay. The first section of the game is set up to be the perfect way to figure out the game's mechanics without giving you any explicit instructions. It achieves this by setting out an area to make use of all the stealth mechanics, giving it a trial and error type scenario. Something that I've always thought was cool was that they start you in a position that's not clearly evident of how to progress, encouraging you to try things out, as well as this, giving you a chance to feel out the buttons. It also rewards you for exploring the area that you've just come from with a hidden ration, this game's form of health pack. This also gives you a reason to figure out how to use the items. Once you've pressed everything to get past the barrier, you will realize that the only way through is to crawl through the small space to reach the other side of the object blocking you. Now, I can't stress how cool this is being there instead of a tutorial. First of all, crawling wasn't a common mechanic in games during this period, so forcing you to figure out its presence without having to tell you, just so that you could progress past the very start of the game is genius. And that's the kind of thing that happens a lot in this tiny area. Once you've crawled through the space, you can start thinking about how you're going to get to the elevator, but in doing so, you'll notice numerous obstacles, some of which aren't even clearly defined. So let's go over a few ways that this could play out. First thing you notice is that you're not equipped with any weapons apart from your fists. So running straight out to where the guards are to beat them up is one way you can go about it, but in doing so there are consequences. An alert sounds, letting more guards know your position. This alert has two modes. Alert mode, which means they know your position and that they're actively attacking you. Then there is caution mode, which means that they're coming after you but they're not aware of your current position. So the sensible way to deal with the guard would be to do so quietly to avoid making a scene. By walking towards a wall, Snake will flatten his back against it, allowing you to shimmy left and right. In this case, we need to shimmy towards the corner of the wall, revealing a new camera angle, giving you a better view of the guard, allowing you to watch his movements until the right time. You can then proceed to knock him out with a choke hold or just straight break his neck if you're into that kind of thing. But there's also another route that you can take, and that's to go unnoticed. If you go the alternative route to the paths that the guards walk, you can sneak around them without being spotted. But this presents its own set of problems. Your path is covered with puddles of water that make noise when stepped on, alerting the guards to check on what the suspicious noise was. So to avoid this, you will need to get back on the ground and crawl over the puddle to make as little noise as possible. But the noise can also be used to your advantage by distracting the enemy away from their position. 
opening up more routes to take. You can also do this by knocking on walls whilst you're pressed against them. This can be used for different situations as well, like luring a guard away to isolate him and take him out on his own. Or you could even lure all the guards to stand in the same position looking for the same thing whilst you run off and carry on with the mission, with the guards being none the wiser. Now onto the elevator. Once Snake has slipped past the enemies and is at the elevator, you need to call it down to the level you're on. This means that you have to wait around for a short while. For people who play on the offensive, this may not be too much of a problem, but for anybody who decided to play stealthily, you'll have a little more to worry about. Luckily, just to the right of the elevator is a forklift truck where you can put Warhug into use again by using it to hide in a narrow space. When standing in this spot, you're out of view to anybody patrolling the area, making it a safe place to hide until the elevator arrives. Better still, the elevator is manned by another guard who will spot you straight away if you're in plain sight, so some kind of strategy is always the best bet. Then, once you're in the elevator, it goes to the proper title sequence with a badass shot of Snake with the logo above his head, with it then dimming to black and silence, marking the end of this section of the game. So what I just showed you was one of the best game tutorials that didn't even give you an instruction. The area and enemy placement specifically makes you have to try out all of the mechanics and feel your way through with even the perceived easier path having curveballs, like the puddles to keep you on your toes, or on your belly rather. The game shows you how it functions completely before letting you go wild with the rest of the world, making you fully equipped function-wise to tackle the rest of the game. Even the smallest aspects play pivotal roles in pushing you to try things, like waiting for the elevator makes you need to find a place to hide and stay safe, or going back on yourself into the water to get the item which then teaches you how to use health packs. It's a genius bit of game design that you don't see very often. Now every game just seems to show you stuff followed by a button prompt on screen. Personally, I find tutorials at the beginning of games the worst part in some titles and should be able to be turned off completely. They sometimes make me not want to play a game because I know the first 15 minutes is not going to be actual gameplay, but reading and following instructions. Metal Gear Solid requires you to think differently and use your own initiative. With the lack of weapons at the start of the game, you have to retrain yourself to play by the game's terms and let your instincts take over. Having the freedom to just start playing a game and figuring out how it works is an old concept, but a refreshing experience to go back to these days. With games treating players more and more with kids' gloves, whether it be aim assists or being able to respawn after death practically in the same position that you died, all these things are there to make games easier and more streamlined for any kind of player to be able to jump in. But I feel as though this strips away most of the challenge of figuring out how to actually play the game, let alone develop your own playstyle. Being able to express yourself in a game is where the fun comes from. Having your own agency to try and manipulate whatever situation you may find yourself in, in the digital world, is what gives you the sense of accomplishment, that you've figured it out yourself using the rules given to you, rather than being steered to do things the way that the game wants you to. This was obviously a very early version of this concept that has gotten much bigger with current releases, allowing you to push physics engines to the limit. But when those tools was not at hand, creativity and imagination was what was needed at this stage, something that Kojima's team had a ton of at the time. 